Hello, welcome to the Cinema Savvy Movie Podcast, the channel for film reviews, discussions and everything in between. I'm Chris Garner, joined on the co-host Tate and the Hour, and today we're going to be bringing you our review on Joy, which is the 2015, I guess sort of into yeah. 2016 mm-hmm. for us, biographical comedy film directed by David O. Russell, starring Jennifer Lawrence, Robert De Niro and Bradley Cooper. Christy, look at me. I want you to remember something. Because a lot of times people get nice things and they start to think differently. We got here from hard work, patience, and humility. So I want to tell you, don't ever think that the world owes you anything. Because it doesn't. The world doesn't owe you a thing. I was valedictorian in high school. I got into a fancy college. I stay in here because my parents are getting divorced. You know what you are, Terry? You're like a gas leak. We don't see you, we don't smell you, but you're silently killing us all. Maybe your dreams are on hold for now. That's a nice way of putting it. You're so beautiful. You could have married anybody. You could have married a doctor, a lawyer, a nice man, instead of this... I don't even know what to call this guy. Are you seriously talking about this right now? I believe the ordinary meets the extraordinary every single day. I have real ambitions and real ideas. We're making an invention. And it's very serious. Joy's never run a business in her entire life. It's my fault. I gave her the confidence to think she was more than just an unemployed housewife. I don't want to end up like my family. I have to do things myself once and for all. Okay, Godspeed. Good luck. Here we go. Um, so yeah, it's been quite a while since we've done a review. I think it's been like five days since our uh, Revenant one. Yeah. So hopefully. Uh, you know, schedule, conflicts, all that stuff, but hopefully we can get back into the swing of things now, bring you more regular reviews as we get towards Oscar season. Um, so yeah, would you say that this one is one of the big hitters? Certainly in the acting category, it's, I'd it's say a reasonably it was. a big hitter. Yeah, um, I mean, David O. Russell, you look at his last few films have been, um, I think Silver Linings Playbook won one for performances as well, um, yeah. American Hustle, the fighter um if we just sort of get into this um by going into like his line of work i've only seen silver linings playbook before this one um the other two that he made are the fighter and american hustle i've heard very um different opinions on some people come down on it really hard and say they're terrible films and then others say that they're fantastic um i don't know if you've seen any of the previous ones if you can shed a bit more light Um, on looking back through his previous films i've seen three kings yeah um, I believe that is the only one I've seen so far. I was meant to see American Hustle. I was meant to see Silver Linings Playbook. I haven't seen either of them. Um, I haven't really heard much about The Fighter, um, but I definitely saw Joy. So um, I guess we're reviewing that then. Uh, that's good, yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, this one's been going up for quite a lot. Two nominations at the Golden Globes for mm-hmm. Best Picture uh, for Musical or Comedy. And it uh, Jennifer Lawrence got a win again for Best Actress. And she's also been nominated for the academy award for best actress um this one's gonna be a pretty difficult one for me to talk about oh, no, really no because... she didn't win best actress at the gone glows did she uh yeah and a win no, i thought brie larson won it oh, that's a good point i'm going by wikipedia on here i need to check my facts before i just you do need to check stuff on facts. wikipedia yeah it says and a win for jennifer lawrence best picture the best actress sorry oh in a musical and comedy ah. yeah yeah there you go there not drama got no, it no not drama <laughs> definitely not drama this is not a drama although it does have some very dramatic scenes in it it does yeah so um yeah as i was saying this is going to be a bit of a difficult one for me to talk about in that i it was one of those movies where i knew it was coming out and i really really didn't want to see it i was like i saw silver linings playbook another popular opinion for me i really didn't care for that movie at all um it got a lot of hype when it came out for performances and stuff i just sort of caught it on tv one time and i didn't really see what the fuss was about uh and it's sort of the case with this one a little bit for me as well um if you've got the imdb up do you just want to rattle off what the basic okay, plot's about and then so... we'll go into that <laughs> <laughs> joy is the story of the title character good start <laughs> Um, who rose to become the founder and matriarch of a powerful family business dynasty uh, so let's break that down a bit. It's basically about the woman who came up with the miracle mop. And Amazing. When, when, when you say that as the plot, uh, it can turn a lot of people off, I think. And that was sort of what was turning me off because I sort of I, I saw that plot and I was like, well, I, I immediately, do you know, I immediately thought this has to be a comedy. Yeah, this has to be a comedy. <laughs> and I was like, what's, what's the point? 
I don't, I, don't, I really don't need to know about this. But yeah. um, at the heart of it, it is sort of an underdog story, and that's the elements of this film I liked the most. Um, mm. I wouldn't go so far as to say that I loved this movie because I do think that it suffered from a few pacing issues. I think it was a bit disjointed and didn't really know yeah. what it wanted to be at the crux of it. But the strongest stuff for me is seeing this character. Um, I'm going to get her name up now because I should know this. <laughs> uh, Joy Mangano, I think her name is. Uh, um, yeah. Jennifer Lawrence's character. Um you know, just striving, working, trying to build this empire from nothing. Um, from the very beginning of the film, we see that she's sort of gifted with ideas and she's very creative. And then life gets in the way and she gets in, you know, pressing hand into like yeah. humdrum life. And then it's her just trying to build this empire and be this strong businesswoman. And that, that stuff of the film, I loved. And I thought Jennifer Lawrence played it brilliantly. Yeah, I think in this film, she does play a really kind of i don't know the way she kind of holds herself in the film the way she acts it's good it's a good performance it's a very strong performance and without really spoiling anything here i'd say that nomination was definitely deserved mm. um for the academy award whether she'll win it or not don't know probably not there are stronger performances and it doesn't really help that this film is a musical and or comedy mm. um <laughs> So, yeah, I, I just think in the end, I connected with her character on screen quite well. So it wasn't really much other than that, that I could say. <laughs> yeah, but the, the comedy elements for me, um, and I th I've, I've seen a lot of reviews for this film as well, and they sort of say the same points, is that Jennifer Lawrence's character is so good, but yeah. everyone else just sort of blends into the background, and they don't feel like... I just don't connect with them. They're not really nice people. Yeah. They're not anyone I can get invested in. And that's what I'm struggling with with this film is that I wouldn't go so far as to say it's a bad film because I like the story it's trying to tell. I love a good underdog story and all that. And it is um, it is a biographical film as well. Yeah. But you really don't care about anyone other than the character of Joy. And that's fine. But there is so much time where Joy is with her family, where she's in the business world. And because I'm only meant to care about one character, I'm just not getting invested in the entire film. I think... And, I, I yeah. don't know. Like, the side characters in this film, they're nowhere near as important as the main character. I know yeah. some films... In fact, a lot of ensemble films, which I would say this is an ensemble film, um, nowadays usually have bigger roles for the side characters, and they have a lot more dialogue, and they're a lot more, I'd say, crucial towards the plot. But mm. in this film... The film's joy, and it really is just joy. Yeah. So. Yeah, absolutely. And, um, I mean, I, I don't want to go into... It's very difficult to talk about this spoiler-free, actually, because there's really yeah. not a lot to say about the movie. In fact, this will probably be one of our shortest main show reviews uh, probably on the channel of all time. But um, We could possibly like... talk about, um, like, um, like, on the top billing here, it's, like, Robert De Niro, Bradley Cooper... Yeah. But, like, both of those characters in the film, you barely see Robert De Niro. Yeah, and even less of Bradley Cooper as well, because I mm. think on most of the posters, the main poster is just sort of Joy with the sunglasses on looking up to the sky, but and I have that seen is, some... That is the end of the movie. That is, that is basically yeah. it, yeah. Um, but Bradley Co I've seen him on a lot of the posters as well. It's sort of uh, Jennifer Lawrence side by side with yeah. Bradley Cooper, and I don't know if that's sort of riding off the hype of um, Silver Linings Playbook and it's trying to connect to audiences on that level possibly but um bradley cooper's great in the film for like the the two scene two or three scenes he's in mm. and he really doesn't show up until like after the halfway point of the movie i would say um he's sort of the i don't even know what you'd call it the director of like the telly sales floor yes of that whole business side of it he picks the products he knows uh, which ones to sell which ones are going to make money and he takes a chance with her one and um Oh, I don't know if this is spoilers now. Uh, sort of semi-spoilers for this scene, I guess. But it's this scene where she first goes on to the television and she's got to market this mop. Like, I think they get yeah. someone in, don't they, to sell it and it doesn't sell. No one's buying, so they pull the product. And she says, let me go on the telly because it's my product. I'm passionate about it. I can put it across well. I got um, this meeting with you, so I know that I can do it. Yeah. And she gets on to the floor and Bradley Cooper predicted it and he says, people freeze up on there. I've seen it happen before. And the cameras go on and she's just like, you know, a deer in the headlights. She's just staring like, yeah. why am I here? 
oh god please help me now but then she gets into the swing of things and then the total starts going up and calls start coming in um and i think what it is is and this is another thing as well where they're telling her what to dress bef- uh, what to wear yeah. before she goes on and they have her all decked out in this fancy dress and hair and makeup all that stuff and she says two seconds i'm just going to change into something else and she just comes out in her everyday clothes and she says this is me i'm yeah. just going to be me and that's what people liked about her and i liked that aspect to the character that she is just sort of she just wears an everyday a white, woman white collar t-shirt doesn't she yeah white yeah shirt. absolutely and that's what made her character really you know just uh, you know you can connect with her yeah um i have to say this film something that i did quite like about it was the hair and makeup and the costume design mm. i think um for i'd, I'd say a modern ish film a more yeah. modern film instead of it being like a drama set piece like a um i don't know like queen elizabeth or something like that um this is set in 1989 and I know that um, it's very similar stylings to what I've seen from like posters and trailers for American Hustle and films like that. I yeah. think the hair and makeup in this film was actually quite nice. Um, yeah. It just kind of blended into the background really well and it didn't draw too much attention to itself, but it stood out somehow. Mm. Like it was always there, always kind of in the foreground. Um, and I, I, I don't know. I just quite liked it. It yeah definitely uh it's definitely got a good look to it i like the sort of visual style of it and i, I think it's definitely you can see david o russell's style from this from yeah. silver lines play but i mean that's the that's the only film i've got reference to at the minute i haven't watched these other ones as i said but um i'm trying to think if there's anything really else to talk about the plot itself is just a very simple rags to riches underdog story really and yeah. aside from that it's a performance heavy focused there film. is something that i do have to say though um yeah if you have a look at the actual person joy mangano yeah um she doesn't really look like jennifer lawrence but i can't think of any actress who may be able to get to replace jennifer lawrence in this role mm. um it'd be quite interesting to see um if we could come up with a list of it um possibly when we're doing the oscar live stream maybe we could have a look at alternative characters for different films in the oscars but I don't know. I'm, yeah, I'm trying I've just to think. Got a picture up now. Yeah. I'm looking now. Um, I'm trying to think. That's going to be a difficult one for the Oscar live stream. I think. Yeah. She, oh, she does look familiar somehow. Yeah. I'm going to have to think about that. Yeah. <laughs> but um, I think this was the. I want to say it was the third collaboration with O. Russell and Jennifer Lawrence and Bradley Cooper. I and Bradley think Cooper, it yeah. might be a new thing. <laughs> yeah, and I remember seeing the trailer to this film when it was initially coming out, and it was from the director of Silver Linings Playbook. Starring Jennifer Lawrence, Robert De Niro, and Bradley Cooper. So I was like, oh, so it's just a sequel to Silver Linings yeah. Playbook, basically. Um, but, you know, a lot of directors do that. We've seen that with Nolan or Tim Burton, where, oh, Tarantino. God, does Tim Burton do it? Tarantino, absolutely, Jesus, yeah, where yeah. They, they sort of get a core cast and then just spam Stick that cast it, yeah. for, like, the next few films, yeah. And it definitely works. I mean, Jennifer Lawrence is a fantastic actress. We've seen her do um, sort of comedic stuff as well as the emotional stuff. I mean, in our review of... Um, hunger games mocking jay part two we really both didn't care for that movie but we both acknowledge that scene towards the end of yeah. that movie with jennifer lawrence and i do think that throwing mugs at cats and stuff like that <laughs> <laughs> as you do <laughs> um, but no i definitely think she does deserve the nomination but as you said she yeah. is going up against quite a lot of good it's a heavy contenders field this and year. Yeah. I'm, I'm happy to stick with uh, my saoirse ronan and um yeah oh my god name was in my head now it's gone Brie Larson, Brie Larson from, Room? from Room. Yeah, I was I was just about to say Alison Brie, and I was thinking, no, it isn't Alison Brie. <laughs> yeah. No, but um, we everyone who's been listening to this hopefully knows our feelings on Brooklyn and how we just want. Yeah, that we to want just... that to win something. Anything. We want that movie to win life, <laughs> <laughs> and it probably won't. But um, yeah, so I guess it did I make think... back on box office. This movie, uh, ninety-one point two million for sixty million. Budget. Oh yeah. Um, I, I know it came that's... out. It came out Christmas in the US, and mm. I think it was New Year's Day England. Yeah, New Year's Day for us. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think I think that star power is definitely a big draw in this. Maybe director as well. Um, but yeah, it made its money back, so it did something right. It's. Yeah, I I'm guess not we could lie just... though. Like when I was watching the trailer, I didn't think it was going to be a comedy, and it was. There was some no. comedic elements, and I feel like just like The Martian. It was in the wrong category for that um, at yeah. the Golden Globes. Like this wasn't really a comedy; it was more of a drama. Yeah, this isn't a comedy at all. Um, 
it, it, it does have comedic elements, but it's yeah. not all out a comedy. And The Martian is so not a comedy. Oh, it's completely not a comedy. And it's like, oh, this film has a joke in it. Let's put it in the comedy category because that's has, how it, it works. It has a disco montage in it. Oh, comedy. That's, that, that's oh, you know what? Then Ex Machina should have been up for that. Yes, for the glorious disco number in that <laughs> movie that you so hate but I love. Disco number in that film. Oh, it's fantastic. <laughs> I'm going to fight you for just forever on that. <laughs> um. But yes, yeah, so people listening to this review might be thinking like, God, these guys are just treading water. And we, we pretty much are because yeah. there really isn't a lot to talk about this movie. So do you want to go into recommendations and then we can go into a couple um, of spoiler scenes? Or I, do you think This good? is a film where I would once, after I finished watching it, I was like, yeah, I'd recommend this film. And now looking back in it, I think there isn't really much to talk about. This film will probably get forgotten, yeah. um, which is quite sad. Um, it was an okay film. It's a good film. It's a uh, watch once and then never really have to watch again until 20 years later and you think, oh, wait, that was nominated for something? Oh, okay, I'll watch it then. Uh, maybe it was good. Um, but I'd, I'd say watch it and then let it settle and then maybe watch it again in 20, 30 years' time. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I think if you're a fan of Jennifer Lawrence, definitely give it a watch because it's another solid performance from her. The problem is, though, I could see... Silver Linings Playbook and American Hustle becoming like almost cult classics. Some yeah. people holding on to it. This film, I don't really see that. No, um, no, and I'm I, I'm sort of there with you. Like, I think I've, it might be the plot, like the whole ringable mop thing. Yeah, it's a very. It, it seems like now you can just do a biographical film on anything now. Yeah. <laughs> you just, um, it's certainly no Everest um, no. or anything like that. It's a very simple plot. Very, as I said, rags to riches, underdog story of Jennifer Lawrence building this empire, which and is. It's very nice to see, and it's nice to see a character yeah. grow. But there's just not a lot to take away from the and movie. I don't. I think. know we're splitting up the spoiler and non-spoiler section here, but to be honest, there's only one thing that we're going to talk about. Well, two things maybe. Yeah. in the spoiler section like it isn't really a film that has too much material and it doesn't right. feel like it drags on for a long time it's just a good performance by Jennifer Lawrence and then some stuff in the middle also starring Robert De Niro <laughs> also starring Robert De Niro and Bradley <laughs> who's, Cooper who's just there? and my friend uh, is a massive Bradley Cooper fan like he loves him he went to go see Burnt and raved about it and I mm. saw Burnt and went that is a terrible film um, but yeah it's quite difficult. Yeah, I'm just sort of looking at critical response at the minute. Um, it's been getting mostly mixed reviews. It's currently sitting at a 60, which isn't awful. Yeah, it's it's bad. just a very, very, very average movie. But yeah, so that's sort of our recommendation on the film. Now we're going to go into spoilers or spoiler. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so I just want to talk about my favorite scene in the film. Uh, the sort of I, I like the TV sales part, but the, the biggest TV bit sales for me. Part. Yeah is where she sort of gets embezzled out of all this money and her ideas stolen. Yeah. And she's, I think she files for um, bankruptcy for a second time, doesn't she? Or yeah, she, she, take a she almost does. Second mortgage on a house, everything yeah. like that. She's basically lost everything. And her family are saying, look, you've got to move into this apartment, file yeah. for bankruptcy. You've got to let this thing go. You've got to sign these papers. And joy has always been a very very hopeful character like with her relationship with her grandma at the start um and the daughter as well she's always been trying to do the best but it's where she has nothing yeah she, she can't be hopeful anymore. nothing to lose and she just all her initial concept art and designs for the mop and everything like that she just rips off the wall and she just breaks down and it's in front of a daughter and a whole family as well but it's just pure emotion, and I think that Jennifer Lawrence does play that scene just yeah. perfectly. And you can tell the emotion, and I know that j j when I think of Jennifer Lawrence, I think she's a kid in the Hunger Games films. I'm not going to lie. Mm. Like, yeah. I'd say in the final film, she was blossoming into a woman, and that's really when, like, she really does take a strong hold on it. But all the way through the film, she's a teen, she's a kid. In this film, there was not one point where I thought to myself, oh, yeah, Jennifer Lawrence is like a kid she is a fully fledged woman in this film and yeah. in that scene there she almost goes back into a childlike state mm. like she's around her family and stuff like that she just wants to be with her parents and just like make sure they hug her so that like the world is okay and stuff like that mm. yeah and, and I, I do think it is an inspiring film in the aspect of how she does sort of rise above it and at the yeah. end where it's on the poster where she dons the leather jacket and the sunglasses and she walks out in slow motion it's like she has become a badass, badass. 
She's a strong, independent <laughs> woman who don't take no crap from nobody. <laughs> she's sassy. She's feisty. I have to she say though, that out. negotiation that she did with the um, guy who was um, stereotypical Texan guy, stereotypical Texan hat. guy who has basically stolen her ideas. Yeah, she really does rip into him. She rips him a new yeah. one, maybe even three new ones. <laughs> she, she she evolved. She reached her critical evolve form in that scene, and yeah, she just lays it all out there, and she just goes, "This is what it's going to be. This is what you're going to pay me. Yeah, you're going to sign this away." And yeah, so that bit, seeing that transformation of the character after that scene was brilliant to watch. I also really like the scene um, much earlier on in the film as well, where she's trying to sort of pedal this mop on the street. Yeah, and I think she's in a car park somewhere. And um, sort of no one's taken to it. And then she pretends to be a customer. Like she gets a friend to demonstrate them up. And then she walks mm. there and then that sort of gets people's attention. And then the police show up and like kick her off the off the car park. I thought that bit yeah. was pretty funny as well. So there are good scenes in it. And I do think it is the actual core of the story is very inspirational. But I think that it does sort of... I don't know. It gets muddled along the way, I think, in... Um, you've got the whole relationship thing with her ex and then there's the whole thing with the mother and yeah you know robert De Niro. i don't know it doesn't feel like a very focused movie i don't think but the scenes where it does shine in terms of jennifer lawrence's character as she grows and then she becomes that feisty woman at the end that business savvy one yeah. and i actually do think it ended on a really nice sort of book ended scene where you know she's sitting behind a desk and then she's got other would be inventors coming up to her pitching their ideas and she's giving them money and she's given them space a to work on their ideas it brings yeah it's a film full circle and it's a good ending yeah um, so i i do like the elements of the film like that i just don't think that it's as memorable as no. it should be as a film like this and there are other better underdog stories that you can watch yeah it's a pretty harmless watch i don't regret seeing it but i mean as people can probably tell if you're still watching this review it's pretty much difficult for me to remember key bits of this film so yeah. that's in my opinion a fault of the film really but maybe that's just the story i don't know um i've pretty much said everything i can on this movie i have like said everything 10 minutes i can ago, on this probably. movie as well you are in a room and there is a gun on the table. I want my life to be. The only other person in the room is an adversary in commerce. Only one of you can prevail. Do you pick up the gun, Troy? I pick up the gun. Listen to me. Never speak on my behalf. about my business again to love somebody to love somebody the way i love you so yeah that was our review on joy be sure to rate like comment subscribe let us know what you thought of joy uh do you think it stands a good chance at the oscars for best actress let us know um tune in for I... the oscar live stream as well when that happens yes um, so Oscars take place on February 28th. I had it in my head that it was taking place um, as, well, tomorrow. January 28th. So I, I was just like in an absolute state just trying to get to see all these movies to get them all done. But no, it's February 28th. We'll be doing a live stream. I don't think we have times and everything down yet, but we'll let you know when that is coming It'll be around. up on YouTube and we'll possibly um, put up um, a notification just so that you guys know on our channel. But seriously... Um, It'll be something that you could watch alongside um, the Oscars. You can see our opinions and stuff like that. It should be fun. Yeah, it's going to be fun. We've got to, we're going to have like games. We're going to do more marvelous and malicious movie minutes on the fly. So you that's can be chat fun. to us if you want about your film opinions. We'll yeah. answer. Um, I'm not sure whether... Um, I know that us two are definitely confirmed. Um, I think George wants to do it, and I think Tom wants to do it as well. And we may be getting some other friends in um, just just to have a laugh, really. Yeah, I mean, we want to make it a big event, so spread the word. Uh, you know, we want a big turnout for it. I mean, a even reasonably if there's one big person, turnout. Even if that... there's one person, we'll continue streaming because we'll probably be on Skype anyway. 
Yeah, so. absolutely. Um, so, yeah, look out for that. As I said, more details will follow in the next coming weeks. Um, it's been quite a while since we did a review, but hopefully we can get more into the swing of things now and get more reviews to you of all the big Oscar yeah. films. We've also got Deadpool coming out next month, and I cannot wait for that. So a lot more coming to the channel as we get into 2016 and all the movies that are coming out. So, as I said, comment, like, subscribe, all that good stuff, and we'll see you in the next review. So until then, thanks for listening.